huge night for a huge fight in a division that's as hot as a division can be, full of talent. Um, we're coming back to the Barclays Center, coming off what's going to be, got, you know, again, the rest of the night, God willing, goes off with a glitch. But um, in terms of a promotion and in terms of attention to our sport, um, it doesn't get better than this. You know, Ray Leonard said to me on the, the day as yesterday, he, he like poked me and he said, feels like the old days, huh? And, um, and it does feel like the old days because there's heat on boxing right now. There's, there's heat on the welterweight division. Tonight, there's a great, great fight. You know, Thurman Garcia, Garcia Thurman, however you want to put it. Um, but, you know, two guys in a betting fight. I just Betting fight, the line just came down. Danny Garcia is taking some money. The spread is, you know, between the two guys is coming down um, because it's that kind of fight. Uh, the two, you know, two of the very best fighting two of the very best. And Showtime, which is on the roll of rolls over the last, like, Really, year and a half, but particularly over the last 12 months. Um, Showtime, we're coming back with you know premier boxing champions on Showtime, and Showtime Championship Boxing at the Barclays Center on April 22nd um, with another great show, and another show that's going to sell tickets because it's just good stuff. And um, Berto Porter is a can't miss fight, another can't miss fight, another can't miss fight in the welterweight division. Um, it's been my pleasure to work with Sean and his dad in, in recent fights and, you know, get to know these guys over the course of the last couple of years. You know, we were here, you know, we said at the time we, we, we had one of the biggest fights ever here in the Barclays Center. It's going to be eclipsed by tonight. But Thurman and Porter was a tremendous event. It was a tremendous event in the ring. Uh, it was a fight that, that was sensational and where Sean had every reason to walk away saying, shit, I should have gotten that decision. Um, he didn't, and it was a close fight, and that's why Thurman's fighting tonight. But he's back here now in a huge fight again on April 22nd with a guy that I know really well since he's a kid. Uh, called him before his Olympic Games and said, uh, you're going to be a great pro. I don't really care if you win or not in the Olympics. Don't worry about it. Your style's not made with the Olympics. We had a long conversation about it. Uh, I sort of said to him, I think you're going to get robbed uh, over there. But... When you come back, we're going to get a deal done because you're going to be a great pro. And um, he went there and he got robbed and we got a deal done and he was a great pro. And um, and this is a fight between two great pros. You, you can't miss. And I, I'm so thrilled. April 22nd, we're going on sale tonight at 630 in the arena with a pre-sale. It's $500 VIP tickets, 350 ringsides, and down to a $50 ticket. So we're on sale in less than an hour in the arena. Public sale will begin Wednesday. There's a private sale between now and and Wednesday. Um, we're going to keep the momentum going. And the man that's really making this momentum right now in a big way um, is about to say a few words. And I, I'm grateful to him for uh, everything he's doing right now to keep boxing uh, on an elevated plane um, and to keep getting fights to the people you know, either on Showtime Premium Cable or on, you know, Showtime Boxing on CBS presented by Premier Boxing Champions. Um, you know, getting fights to the most eyeballs. Tonight on CBS, that's great stuff. Back on Showtime at the Barclays Center with a great fight. Uh, shortly, that's great stuff. And I'm really thrilled for my friend Steven Espinosa. Um, thanks, Lou. Um, I do have to correct uh, one thing. You know, I'm uh, candidly, I'm not the person making this happen. Uh, it certainly takes the cooperation of, of networks and promoters. Uh, but really, fights like this don't happen without fighters. Um, and it all starts with fighters willing to fight the best. And it's the best fighting the best. And that's really what allows this to happen, is when fighters are willing to take on the best fighters in their division, forget about the first loss, forget about the second loss, forget about losing, just making the best fights possible. We get this kind of momentum. With respect to April 22nd, you know, Lou, I think accurately described it all. Um, Sean is just, you know, this close to actually being here in this fight tonight against Danny Garcia. Um, you know, but for a couple seconds in a couple rounds, um, you know, we're probably sitting here and and Keith Thurman's here talking about possibly fighting 
uh, Andre Berto. Uh, as for Andre, we know um, he's never in a boring fight, never has been, never will be. So uh, this is, once again, the top guys of the division facing off against the top guys in the division. And in the larger picture, it's part of what really has been a de facto welterweight tournament. Uh, we didn't announce it that way. It was drawn up that way, but you know we don't want to make assumptions. You announce a tournament, and then everyone sort of uh, complains if it doesn't happen exactly according to plan. But in this particular event, it is going according to plan. Um, these two guys, the winner's going to be right back in the thick of things. Um, We've got a, a phenomenal fight tonight. We've got another fight on Showtime in Spence versus Brooke. Um, and right there between this series of fights, really, that started you know, last summer with, with Sean Porter and Keith Thurman, you're seeing the best of the welterweight division. And hopefully, with a little bit of luck, we'll have something close to an undisputed champion or maybe even an undisputed champion within the next six to nine to 12 months. Uh, but most importantly, what I do know is on April 22nd, we'll have an action-packed fight against with, with two of the best guys in the division. And I can't wait. Thanks, guys. But there are a bunch of people here that work for, for me, that work for the Barclays Center, that work for Al and PBC, um, guy, guys like Sam and Brad, Louie, um, guys like Anthony, who are in the trenches every day. And, and every day, work is going into building what we're doing here. And, and creating these opportunities for these guys who want these opportunities, who rise to the moment. And, and, uh, and it's going to be a good run. It's going to continue. You know, I'm, I'm really happy to say that. I don't like we're sitting here, we're announcing one fight, but we're really announcing a continuing series of great boxing. Um, I just tried to call Mauricio Suleiman. We're in discussions, and, and this, there's a very good chance this fight will be announced that it will be an elimination, title elimination bout uh, for the WBC mandatory. So, um, you know, when, when Steven said what we're doing is creating a series of fights, we are creating a series of fights. Literally, Mauricio and I have been on the phone today about this. We're working on it. Um, but, but again, that's how you assure. Make sure your mandatories are a great fight and you've you got great stuff coming. And, um, and that's what we're doing here. Um, there are two great trainers involved in this fight. I'm not going to get into these guys' credentials, so you know them. They don't have belts right now, but they're champions. I mean, these are two guys, they, they're physically similar in stature. Um, they're offensive-minded, they know how to box, uh, and they know the importance of this fight. Winner of this fight is going to get a mega fight. That's it. Loser of this fight is going to get upset. But um, winner of this fight is going to have a tremendous opportunity. So uh, first I'll bring up a great trainer, a uh, great relationship with his son, one of the situations of boxing where the father-son relationship really works well and the way it's supposed to. Um, my pleasure to bring up Kenny Porter. Thank you, everybody, for coming out today. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, thank the Barclays for having us. Coming back here is um, it's great. I can't say uh, anything more than that. The first time we were here was tremendous, and the roar of the crowd and the atmosphere is something that we love. So here we are again. Um, I'd like to thank Showtime, Steven Espinoza, uh, everyone that's here today is here for a reason. Everybody's got a job to do. I'd like to thank Mr. Andre Berto, because contrary to what a lot of people think, all of us come from the same place, and all of us coaches. I'd like to thank Coach Virgil Hunter. Um, people don't know this. He was one of my mentors when Sean was about 10 years old, and Sean was looking up to Andre when Andre was doing all the things he did. Two great fighters, great coach, great uh, venue, great network. We're happy to be a part of this. Thank you. Another great coach with Andre Berto. Um, it's early in their relationship. I think Berto uh, is excited about this opportunity and what's been happening with him and Virgil. So uh, a great trainer, Virgil Hunter. Again, good to see everybody uh, for a great event tonight. And thanks to Showtime. Thanks to everybody involved. Um, a little focused on what's going on tonight, so I can't remember all the names. But um, uh, Kenny is right, but what he didn't know, I was trying to steal Sean from him. But, <laughs> but, 
but it is. I believe it is going to be a very action-packed fight between uh, two action-oriented guys. Um, I know each, and in, the, each individual will be in great condition, and this is what boxing is all about, and um, this is what uh, PBC is all about, and um, I, I appreciate everything. Thank you. My phone rang, but that actually was Mauricio Suleiman, and this is a fight for the mandatory of the WBC. And, um, you know, final eliminator. This is the, the winner is a mandatory for the WBC title. So this guy doesn't need a lot of introduction, but the, the show he put on here the last time he was here was unbelievable. Um, you know, no one was really complaining or moaning hard about what happened in terms of the decision. But if he would have gotten the decision, it would have been the same thing. No one would have complained because that was the kind of fight it was. This guy's a great fighter, great champion, Showtime Sean Porter. Man, wow. I have to say thank you to Lou. Thank you to Mr. Suleiman. Uh, only thing on my mind right now is the WVC title. That is the only thing on my mind. I uh, turned pro a long time ago, and not long after, I made it a goal of mine before I retired to win that WBC title. So I feel like that's about to happen. Obviously, I got something to work on April 22nd. Not looking not looking past through you at all, Andre Berto. Respect you as a man. Respect you as a fighter. You know that. Uh, we are friends. But like y'all saw, me and Keith Thurman, we friends too. Night of the fight. It's all about the business. Now it's all about getting that WBC title. I'll see y'all soon, April 22nd, right here at the Barclays Center. Thank you. A um, couple of press guys asked me before I walked in here, why is this in Brooklyn? Well, very simple reason. These guys are, are known boxers and known talent everywhere. And this guy just had the biggest fight of his career right in this room. And this guy, his career was built to a large extent in New York City. People forget that, but but you know Andre, when we first got started, um, I got started promoting him when he was a kid. Um, Broadway boxing was his initial home, and he, and he fought a lot of fights in New York. He's got a tremendous connection to the city as well as to an unbelievable Haitian community, Haitian American community in Brooklyn. So this fight belongs in Brooklyn, and it is in Brooklyn. And uh, Andre Berto. Oh man. Feels great to be back. Feels great to be back, man. I want to say thank you to Lou DeBella. I said I started with Lou. You know, he got me straight out of the Olympic Games, and uh, you know we had a terrific run. So uh, you know, looking forward to getting back to it. Um, I, I mean, like I said, it just it just feels amazing just to be back here in New York. Um, you know, me and my team, we've already been putting in a few weeks in the gym. We are dialed in. We're focused. I've had the WBC before. And I'm itching, itching to get it back. I am already had to take out the man that took it away from me this last fight. And um, I'm looking forward to take out anybody in front of me when it comes to standing in front of that again. So I uh, got much respect for, for Sean and his dad. They all know that. We've been friends for a long time. And I got much respect for them. And I know they're going to work their ass off for of this one. And so am I. And um, you know, looking forward to this next one, man. It's going to be a great one. It's going to be a great one. So nobody don't miss it. April 22nd, don't miss it. Q&A now, so. Dan, okay. Andre. Yo. I was in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago with Sean. Uh, he was at the uh, Leo Santa Cruz, Carl Frampton fight, talking about the fact that this fight was in the process of being made. He said that the way that it came about was the two of you guys were on FaceTime, and that Andre Berto was uh, on the toilet. Can you give your side of that story? <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Uh, I felt kind of violated, but uh, you know, I got a call from this guy right here, Ellie Secback, on Facetime, and uh, and there he was. He had. Uh, we said, "Hey, how you doing, Bert? What's going on?" Hey, look, I got Sean next to me. I said, "What?" And I'm sitting on the toilet just trying to enjoy myself. And, um, you know, me and him pretty much just talked it out right there on the toilet. And, 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 and you know, I told him what was going on. And, you know, it seemed like he didn't mind. 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, like I said, we spoke and, you know, I mean, I mean, him agreed on the situation and told him to, I mean, he knew he had to call to try to make sure that, you know, things went like it needed to go. And, um, and then, you know, like I said, we finally just made it happen. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we can say this and say that and, oh, we want to fight, blase, blase. But, yeah, I mean, nothing matters until business gets, you know, done correctly. So, you know, we finally got a business done and, you know, here we are. Thank you. Guys, have you sparred each other? Can you tell me about sharing a ring? Not once. Interesting. That's it. <laughs> Sean, how are you, Sean? You look sharp. You're keeping your dad in great shape. Uh, he's keeping me in shape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you learn last year at the Barclays Center? Last time at the Barclays Center when you were here, I had it eight four for you. I thought you were tremendous in that fight. Uh, tell me, um, what do you mean? What did I? What did what I did, learn? What did you take from that fight? Um, we didn't get to ask you questions after that fight. Oh, okay. Um, oh yeah, that's true. So yeah. we didn't get to ask you questions. What did you learn? What are you gonna uh, take from that fight into this fight with Mr. Berto? Um, you know, I think. You know, gearing up for Andre Berto, we, we definitely, we always focus on myself, but we will focus on his offensive movements, the things that he can do. Uh, he's got great speed, great counter-punching, great counter-punching ability. I think that was something else that, that kind of got me in the fight with Keith Thurman was, you know, good offense, but I left my head there a few times and a few times more than I needed to, which, you know, gave him a few rounds uh, throughout the fight that, you know, ended up giving me the loss in the fight. So I would say, if anything, being here at the Barclays, I, I learned that you guys, y'all know who y'all want to win. When y'all see who wins, y'all make noise for that guy. And so I just got to keep doing what I'm doing, just do it a little bit better. Um, Andre, you've been with Vir Andre, you've been with Virgil Hunter for a little while now. Um, over the course of a number of training camps, how would you now describe your style in the ring? I mean, my style in the ring, um, of course, you know, with the Virgil and just with time in general, um, you know, just a lot more experience, um, you know, just pretty much having a lot more composure. And just not just being so much just offensive just because I have speed, I have power, and, and I can just go, 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 go. But just basically, you know, I mean, just setting everything up and just having a meaning for everything that we're doing. You know, and just make sure everything and every move and every punch and every, and every ounce of energy that – you know, that I generate, um, you know, it's for a purpose, you know, because like I said, just coming from where we come from, you know, I mean, just down south, we just used to, I just had ridiculous, you know, athletic ability. I was, you know, strong, fast. Didn't know what I was doing with it, though. You know, I just, they just let me out the cage and I just go. You know what I mean? So now it's just a lot more structured to what we're doing. Um, um, and it's just making it a lot more effective, man, just a lot more effective. Um, um, I mean, I believe just all the way around, just a lot smarter fighter, you know, preparing and getting ready for fights as well. I mean, I believe, I believe a lot of people seen that, um, you know, and I got ready for the Floyd fight as well. Um, and, and and just going in each camp, man, it just gets better and better and better. So I'm looking forward to going into this one. Um, and like I said, the same thing, be a lot smarter, still fast, still strong, still explosive. But just adding a lot more different things to my, you know, to my, you know, to my arsenal, and be in tremendous shape. Any other questions for Sean? Ray? Nope. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. And then, and then one time. Tom. Baba.